I'm going to start over real quick. I'm Chrissy Cadlick. I manage communications for Interlake Maritime Services, which operates the Interlake Steamship Company. We have a fleet of nine, soon to be 10 vessels in the Great Lakes. I am excited to be here today with Sissy Payment, one of my favorite sailors, a friend of mine, one of our most popular stewards in our Interlake fleet. And Sissy is coming to us from aboard our 1,004 foot Masabi Miner, which is currently in dry dock at Fincantieri Bay Shipbuilding in Sturgeon Bay, Wisconsin. Her ship is not far from our new ship, which the motor vessel Mark W. Barker, which is the first new build for our fleet in 40 years and the first Great Lakes bulk carrier to be built on the Great Lakes in more than 35 years. Just a reminder, if everyone can mute themselves, we're still hearing a lot of feedback, and so you just need to mute your microphone. And if you want to um, take a, finish your video too. So I'm here at my house in Cleveland, Ohio, not far from our corporate headquarters in Middlebrook Heights. We're having a bit of a snow day. So I'm going to apologize first if you hear my dog in the background. But other than that, I think we'll get started. So, so Misty, thank you so much for um, making time to talk to me today. I didn't hear you. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. I said thanks for making time to talk to me today. Oh, yeah, no problem. So happy to. So you're on board right now for winter work, and we want to get to that and what that is. But first, why don't you start out by telling us how you got started working in a floating kitchen back in 2006? Like, who or what led you to this career? Uh, my brother, actually. He, he sailed, he's been sailing since, oh, I think, 99, and he's the one that got me started in it. Uh, said, you should come out here. You do great out here, he says. And so you were like, you're like, okay, I'll give it a try. But what did you know about shipping or, you know, being aboard a vessel or cooking? What what kind of knowledge Absolutely you Absolutely nothing. Absolutely. I knew nothing. I lived in the Sioux my whole life and I knew nothing. The boats, I see the ships every day and knew nothing. Just that uh, I knew I needed uh, better money to pay for what I was doing. So that's why I originally came out here was better money. Great. Well, you've really grown into the position. Like I said, you're one of our most popular um, stewards. Every boat wants sissy on that on there. Um, so we'll get into some of the things you're known for. But talk us through, like, you know, how you started on the board and how you kind of learned on the job to become a cook. Yeah, I was a nurse's aide for 10 years before I came out here, so I knew nothing about cooking. Um, I've learned so, a lot from old stewards I worked with, because I started as a second cook, of course, and didn't really know how to bake much, but you learn a lot from just paying attention from your other stewards. I learned a lot from, like, Paul Smith, Don Stilwell. I mean, some of my very first stewards I ever worked with. Great. And so you you learned on the job, and like you mentioned, there's second cooks. So tell us a little bit about how it works on the vessel. There's a steward and there's a second cook. Can you talk about like how that works and what you're responsible for? Yeah, sure. So I am responsible for the ordering, the ordering, cleaning of my meals, um, doing uh, like keeping sure we have linen, keeping track of my second cook. He's my second cook's got to do all the baking. I got to make breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Where my second cook makes, uh, does desserts, salads, um, cookies, snacks, and he does all the dishes and a lot of like sweeping, mopping, and stuff like that. Okay. So, what is a typical day cook? What's a typical day for Sissy? Not right now because winter work is different, but when you're on board and you're in the season, and our season, just if you don't know, runs from March to January. So, we are going nonstop crisscrossing the lakes that time period. So, during that time, you know, what's a typical day for you? Um, work day normally starts about 5 30 a.m. You get up and you start um, getting your galley ready. Your second cook usually has your um, steam table and everything taken care of. So I come in here and can just start cooking. Um, so I start getting prepped for breakfast, start uh, making my soup during breakfast. So I usually work on all that from like 5.30 and breakfast starts at 7. And I stop serving at 8. 
and then we start working on stuff, getting ready for lunch. And lunch starts at 11. We serve lunch from 11 to 12. And then you get a, depending on what time you get done, you get a break after lunch. Depending on what you're making for dinner, some things are more complicated than others. And then you start making dinner usually by, you know, 2.30, 3 o'clock to serve for 4.30. But then during some of your breaks, you got to make, do grocery orders and inventory, see what I got. You got to plan for the week. Great. And one thing I thought was interesting when I sailed on a vessel is that we always stay on Eastern time, even though we often sail into central time waters, you know, so um, that was always interesting to me. And someone told me, make sure your phone does not switch the time periods because you'll miss a meal. You'll miss breakfast and you do not want to miss a meal on the Great Lake when you're sailing on one of these freighters because the food is just phenomenal. So talk us through, like you say breakfast and people probably think, cereal milk no it's breakfast it's made to order talk about like what you make for breakfast what you make for lunch what you make for dinner oh yeah sure so breakfast is um usually it's like i eggs to order they can i can go and bake them burritos if they want a burrito omelets pancakes french toast if they want blueberries almonds chocolate chips in their uh, pancakes they can have that um Usually there's a choice of potato, uh, hot cereal, and that's usually whatever I choose. Um, breakfast sandwiches, some people just don't want to sit and wait, just get up and grab something. So I usually always have breakfast sandwiches made by like quarter to seven. And then me personally, every Sunday, as I see a picture, that's one of my Sunday specials. Um, every Sunday I do a breakfast special, whether it's eggs benedicts for breakfast, crepes, those uh, bacon faithful pancakes. Mm, so. Yeah. Um, and lunch is always a soup. I usually do five five choices, whether it's a hot dish, then four or five other sandwiches, and then I do three everyday things that they can choose from. Usually a grilled cheese, if you don't like anything, a tuna fish sandwich or melt, or um, a grilled cheese. <clears throat> and then dinner is usually two entrees, two sides, and a veg. Except Sunday, we always, or Saturday is always usually steak night, and usually do a fish entree on Fridays. Great. Yeah, that's why, like, when I'm on board, I always have to do a lot of exercise because I definitely always put on a couple pounds. And then in addition to all of what you're cooking, like you said, our second, the second cook aboard is doing like a 10 a.m., you know, treat, a snack right. of some sort, a cookie every day, a dessert for dinner, and then fresh bread as well. Correct. Yep. So they're they make cookies every day, which is it's their choice. Now, we don't have a set. I make whatever I want. He makes whatever he wants. Sometimes he'll try to coordinate. If I'm having like a pasta night, he'll try to do bread, you know, like a garlic bread or something. But he makes a cookie every day at 10 o'clock, which could be donuts, brownies. It could be Rice Krispie treats. It could be a Danish. I mean, that's just a typical 10 o'clock. Uh, then he always makes a fresh bread for dinner. And then they always do... Um, some kind of dessert, whether it's cheesecake, a pie, regular cake. I mean, you never know what they're going to make. Cream puffs. And then they also keep a salad bar together for the crew. So there's always a fresh salad bar and fresh fruit. They have the second cook always has fresh fruit cut up for them every day. Strawberries, you know, uh, honeydew, cantaloupes, pineapples, berries. Right. And um, so you were bringing up the point, is, is the kitchen ever closed? Like, you're you're off duty but is is the food unlimited can people come and eat and grab things whenever they want they can um breakfast and lunch is mainly cooked to order so if they don't if they miss breakfast i usually always have a breakfast sandwiches or something so they can go to what we call a night lunch fridge and there'll be extra breakfast sandwiches in there that they can grab whenever they want there's also cereal out there at all times for them or if they don't want that there's always sandwiches might, depending on their watch, they might just want a salad because it's their time of day. Or they can always make um, sandwiches. There's always lunch meats, cheeses, cheese sticks, yogurts, fruit out there. Right. And how many, you know, one of the questions here, and this is a good thing to go over, how many people are you actually cooking for um, on board, uh, like the Masabi Miner in a typical day? 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. Okay, so like a little about like two dozen people. Roughly, yeah. Okay, great. 
And, you know, how important is the kitchen, like, you know, at home, the kitchen is the heart of the home. Um, is the kit, is the galley the heart of the ship? The How would you describe it? I feel like it is. It's like one thing we got to look forward to here is, you know, your food. I mean, there's not much to look forward to. So definitely if you're in a crabby mood and that's going to rub off on your crew when they come through the line, if you're just like, grr, and not, you know, like, hey, you know, I'm like, hey, have a great day, sweet dreams, good night, whatever, depending on who's going to bed or whatever. So the keeping the morale up and actually, you know, making good food, because like you said, this is one of the few highlights of a day. If you're working a long watch or things aren't going the way they're supposed to be, you got to shovel a lot of iron ore because something happened in the unloading system. You know, that's not fun all the time. Work isn't always fun, but food is one way to like lift the spirits. Yeah. For sure. I just had one guy come through the line scene of having ribs and macaroni and cheese for dinner. He's like, yes, that's my jam. So he's excited for dinner now. Yeah, so talk about that, like how you um, tell people what's available. You have a board that you post um, what you're making, and then you do something nice where you, I don't know if every steward does this, but um, you post what's up for dinner too, so people know kind of what you're going to have all day. I do. Um, usually, you know, it's, it's very rare because I uh, sometimes I don't know. Sometimes it's like I'll be writing up my lunch menu at like 10 to 11 and just now thinking, what am I going to make for dinner tonight? But I always, I, my buddy Aaron Griffin, actually, that's where I, I pick things up from other ones. And he did that. And I like that. So he always posted lunch and dinner. So I kept that with me after work about Aaron. So I'll, I'll post uh, my soup on top, lunch on one on the left side. Dinner's always on the right side. That is nice because if you want to have a smaller lunch because you know you're going to have a bigger dinner or vice versa, it's kind of nice to plan what you're going to have. Or, or some people don't want to come down. You know, they'd be like, oh, they don't usually come down for dinner. And they're like, oh, that's my favorite. I'll make sure I make it down for lunch or dinner that day. Mm -hmm. And you talked about... Um, you know, people's schedules are so different and they're different watches. So they may, you may, may never see anybody for breakfast just because of the watch they're on and you may only see them at other two meals. So there's always that dynamic going on. And and there's people, new people coming on the ship and, and leaving and going on vacation. So you have a lot of, you have to juggle a lot in the galley, not all your normal duties, but also the personalities and tastes and likes and dislikes of people so you know you seem to do that really well how how do you, what are some of the things that you do to make sure that you're making the food that everybody likes and they want to eat um you got to just pay attention to what like i always make sure after my whatever i've made that day i'll see what sells and what doesn't every crew is different you'll have three people to change and that's going to change your dynamic um, I also put up a list next to my menu board. It says requests. So if somebody's like, man, I'm feeling like I want meatloaf or something this week or whatever, they can write down whatever they want. Or And then I will, if I you know, can, which I need to do that. And I will whatever they've requested. So then I kind of know what they want. But they come and ask me, so you make great, will you make grapes this Sunday? You know, so they usually talk to me pretty good and know what they want. I don't care. I'll make whatever they want. Then it's less things I got to think of. Right. And so you, you know, you talk about making kind of whatever they want. So tell us about the supplies you have on board in order to even, you know, whip all these things up. Are you pretty well stocked with things? Um, what are things that you always, always have on board? And like, how do you manage all that inventory? Because you, you do have to manage that well, because you could get stuck. You could have to not get groceries when you planned. And, and then I, I, I will want you to talk about how you get groceries aboard as well. So yeah, I know on this vessel, I've got four freezers, um, just like your, it would be like a typical home fridge style size if to give you a kind of size reference. And I have them all separated on, like, I've got chicken here, pork here, beef, um, fish. So I know I always have, like, that 
actually have hamburger, for, you know, you always want chicken, hash browns, I always make sure I have sausage and bacon for these guys, you know. Um, <laughs> you do have to plan a week, and I, being on this vessel, I get groceries once a week. So, and that's if we have no weather delays or um, dock delays, you know, a dock could break down or something, and we're going to be there for a day waiting to unload or load. So, you got to uh, kind of plan for that. But I always have, usually at least like, for reference, like 45 pounds of bacon on, four and 50 pounds of burger. Um, I usually always have two sets of steaks. So, I'll have like, whatever ribeyes or flank steaks in my freezer. I always have a bunch of cut up chicken. I, you know, probably 20 pounds at least of chicken breast, always on hand. A bunch of canned and frozen and fre fresh vegetables, always. Great. And you, t so tell us how you get groceries. I mean, you obviously can't run up to the store. You can't run <laughs> up the street to the grocery. Um, so how do you get them? Like how literally do you, you have to, go on your computer, order things, and then they get delivered. Talk a little bit about how that process works. We do. We have a few vendors. We have one in, like, um, the Sault Ste. Marie. We have one up in uh, Superior, Wisconsin. We have another one down in, like, Alpena, Michigan. So I have a rep. I'll get on the computer, and I will click, you know, I will need 20 pounds of chicken breast, 30 pounds of bacon, whatever I need. Eggs, I always have usually at least 45 dozen eggs or 60 to about 60 i think dozen eggs on hand at all times um but you just go on there we fill it out we send it to the office and our purchasing department will send it to the appropriate vendor and then if we're getting them up in duluth um we have a basket that they swing over the side which we're actually stopped because we'll be at port and we'll load them up that way where if we're in the Sue and getting them from there, we don't, the vessel doesn't stop. And we have a tugboat that pulls up as we're going down the river and they crane them on board. And then our deck hands will bring them back to me to the galley for me to put away. Right. I mean, yeah. that's like thinking, thinking about that, like the vessel not stopping, like it's continuing to move. It's, it sounds crazy. It's, it's <laughs> wild to, to watch it, but you guys have it down to your well oiled machine in that sense. And then, the, like, so it's all hands on deck once the groceries get there, right? Like, everybody helps get them to the galley, but then you kind of got to do the unloading process, huh? Yeah, the deck hands will all bring them. They put them on a cart, then they got to push them all the way to the back of the house. And then me and my second cook will sit here and try to sort them as they're coming in our freezer, refrigerator, dry store. We're trying, it's fast, but we try to, you know, sort them as best as we can as they're getting, you know, brought to us. So we can get them put away. And those groceries can happen any time of the day and night, right? Correct. Yeah, there's been, they are called the midnight miners. So we, there's plenty of times I'm getting groceries or getting woke up at 1, 2 a.m. to get groceries put away. Yeah, most definitely. Yeah, that doesn't sound very fun. <laughs> <laughs> Not really, because then your day, your day still starts in the morning, so you still got to get up at 4.35 and get ready for work. So I think one of the challenging things I noticed that, you know, you, you have a predictable schedule. I think that's nice that you have a predictable schedule, because a lot of times the other positions on the boats don't, but you never get a day off. Like, even... Even when maybe there's a Sunday on the run and the deckhands get to kind of have like a, a chill day and they're maybe not doing as much or holidays where people are enjoying these great meals. It's like those are cooked by you. So it's more work on the holidays. So um, talk a little bit about like what's challenging about your position as well. I think the most challenging thing is just thinking of new things to make. It's the, the meals, planning the meals is probably the most difficult thing. And you can't worry about pleasing everybody because everybody's not going to be happy. You know, um, that's got to be the most difficult thing about doing this. And making sure if you have enough groceries and you never run out is probably the two most things that I get nervous about. And what do you think, like, what's the most rewarding part of what you do? When they show you all the appreciation and love for you, you know, they all come through and they're like, hey, you know, thanks, Sissy, that was awesome. So, 
<laughs> Somebody on camera. Was that Ron? That was Ronnie. <laughs> okay, so when you talk about um, menus, like, you know, everybody wants to know because it's hard enough figuring out what you want to make dinner and make for dinner at your own house. So, like, the idea of having to cook, that seems really intimidating. So how far do you plan out your menus? Has that changed over the years as you've become more skilled no. and more comfortable? Oh, most definitely. When I first started, those poor, those poor souls, oh my, I was terrible. <clears throat> um, I've learned a lot and I want to make some really terrible things up. It just like, I felt bad about it when I, something didn't turn out well. I'm like, oh, that was those tenders it could have been. But um, <laughs> you just go with it anymore. I used to have to plan out, I'd plan out a week, but now I don't. I couldn't even tell you what I'm making. Why well, I'm making tomorrow I'm doing chicken farm because Ronnie actually requested that for tomorrow. But normally I don't know. There's times it'll be noon and I don't know what I'm making for dinner at, for today, you know, a lot of times. Um, I just wing it. I recycle a lot of five steaks. I'll pull those that night. Now they're going to soup or something for lunch. So now I just wing it. I don't know. I pull a whole bunch of stuff out at the beginning of the week or when my when my beef rot, my meat part of my fridge is running low on defrosted meats. And I just, oh, what am I going to have today? I'll do something with chicken and pork. I'll Google, if I have service, I'm Googling chicken and pork. See, figure out what I'm going to make today to try to make something different. So it's not the same all the time. Yeah, so where do you get inspiration? Do you just you like you just search online or do you have certain like are you going on Pinterest? Do you have certain people you follow? Where where do you find like a lot of your recipes? Um, so many friends I follow online, like just on like Facebook we'll say, they will post stuff, you know, and I'm like, Oh, that's good, I'll save it. I have this one uh, app that I like to use and I'll save all my recipes for because I can look at them offline. The guys, when they write stuff on my request list, there's things I've never heard of before. And I'm like, oh, so I'll have to Google or look that up, you know, so that's another way. Or like, I'll be like, what am I going to do with chicken breast tonight? Google that. And then find a whole bunch of different things. They're like, hey, I want to do something with Mexican or something Italian or something tonight. I just start saving them and it's a little bit. And do you make, do you, when you make two entrees, do you make enough for everybody to have that? Do you have to make enough for everybody potentially choosing that entree or like, you know, how do you do that? No, no. Like we'll say if I do a steak night, I don't even, everybody doesn't eat steak on steak night, right? So I might have, I have a crew of what we'll say 20, 22 people. I'll cook maybe 18 steaks and I'll cook like, we'll say like eight tuna steaks. Okay. That'll be that. And then. Usually uh, there's a lot of, um, so there might be a few steaks left and I'll pull those that night so I can use them the next day. Um, tonight I'm doing uh, barbecue baby back ribs and I'm doing like four racks and I'm doing chicken pot pies and I'll probably make like six pot pies. So, yeah. I was going to ask you what you're making for dinner. That sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I want to get to the holidays because that's what you're one of the ways you particularly shine on board. But before that, you know, you work a lot of hours. Can you tell us your schedule, like how many days you sail in a season or like how long you're aboard the vessel? That, that does vary. Um, roughly, I might get four months a year off right now. It's about four, I think, is what I get out. Especially doing winter work, like right now, this is an extra three to four weeks. <clears throat> so that takes up a lot of my time. I could be home. Right. You could be off right now, just vacationing or <laughs> yeah. sitting on a sunny beach, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> that would be nice. It's like two degrees here as well. It's freezing up here. Oh, is it? Yeah. So, um, you know, and it, when you do have time off aboard the vessel, I know it's not a lot of time. Tell us what you do in that downtime while you're, you know, on board. Yeah, I go see a lot of my family and friends. <clears throat> usually, all, you know, you go see all, any, all your loved ones. Usually, and I, Actually, a lot of my sailor friends I go visit, too, when they're home. I got, you know, my best girl, Jody. I go visit her if we're home in the winter together. Or go see Catherine or my buddy Ryan is here. I just go over to spend time with my, my, my kids and my mom. And, yeah, well, my brother's here, but we still stay. We're at home, um, travel, 
I do a lot of traveling. I'm not actually home that much. I like to travel. If I am home, I like to paddleboard or kayak. If it's sunny, I look nice on it anyway. So how about when you're on board the vessel, what kinds of things do you do in your downtime there? Well, I knit. Not sure if you guys know that, but I do like to knit. I knit hats. And usually I give everybody a hat at Christmas. I'll knit hats all year and then give them hats. Or Yeah, they're there. <laughs> um, and stuff for Christmas. Um, uh, they got a hammock this year, so I like to hang out underneath the boom on that. Or sometimes the guys, we like to play cribbage. So we were played a lot of cribbage this year. Um, depending on who's on watch, I'll go up to the pilot house, hang out, have we call them coffee socials during break, if I, like after breakfast or lunch. If I have a break, we'll go hang out with the maid or the captain. <clears throat> Me and Captain Berger or Jack will be up there and go and have a coffee and just talking and stuff like that up there. Or that's me and Captain Nick. So, I mean, stuff like that. Um, this year I started puzzles because I like Christmas. So, we did all these puzzles so we could have decorations, and I was surprised at how well my crew actually liked putting those together. It was quite fun. We did quite a few this year. That's great. And that kind of leads me to the holidays. So um, <laughs> you are known for putting on these holiday spreads. And for people that don't follow us on social media or Facebook, you should follow us. But um, you'll get to see Sissy's great work all throughout the season. Um, but, you know, talk about how you approach the ho how Interlake kind of approaches the holidays and like being able to, you're away from family, but you kind of try to make it as festive as possible. And so talk a little bit about how you deal with the holidays and what kind of foods and things that you do around the holidays. Yeah, well, a lot of us are out here, of course, you're out here supporting your family and stuff. And I just, I mean, I feel like we don't have to miss all that by being out here. And I just love Christmas anyway, and just the feeling and the magic. So I just like, my Christmas spirit overflows to my whole crew. Like, I have this place thrown up in Christmas decorations, right? It's absolutely terrible. But, you know, some of the, nobody ever complains. They all like it. They're like, that is, there you go. <laughs> They're like, Sissy, it's just awesome. Thanks so much. And, you know, it boosts morale, actually. It's funny when you take it all down. They're like, oh, it's so bare now, Sissy. I'm like, I know, it's terrible. <laughs> Well, we do holidays you have two meals and i do usually it's two for christmas it's usually two meals but i, uh, I do grinchmas so i actually do three christmas three christmas uh meals um but usually you do traditional ham and turkey most of us do ham and turkey on one day with a big spread and then you do a steak night steak and like lobster or fillets so on the second night but then there's all the sides and everything else and and appetizers and so how oh. long how long do you work on all of that? How much planning and effort goes into putting on like a Christmas? Would you say? I definitely got it down now a little bit more. It used to take I used to take a couple weeks to plan that out. I'd be Pinteresting or Googling all these sides, and because I, I don't like to do the same ones every year. I mean, I'm have same ham and turkey every year, but I try to have the different appetizers and sides and desserts. And I'll let my second cook, you know, come up with some desserts. But I usually also help them with that because I like to make a lot of candy and stuff. But um, now I, I got like I said, I got it down pretty good. It only takes me a couple of days, and we to like plan my menu. And then once my menu is planned. We usually start about two days before the holiday, depending on what all we're making, especially Christmas. Uh, or Thanksgiving is another one that takes a couple, you know, about two days to get prepped and ready. Because it's a, so when we do that holiday, you only serve two meals. So you serve breakfast and then lunch. I depend, everybody's different. Some serve at 11, 12, or 1. Every steward picks their own time. And then that's it. So you get, they eat for that hour and that's their dinner. Because there's so much food that they can come in and graze. Usually, the uh, deckhands or certain ones have the day off. So everybody just comes in and grazes for the rest of the day. Right. And then you do things leading up to it. Like you said, the, you love Christmas. Um, talk about the Grinch and your love affair with the Grinch and the fun things you do on board with your fellow crew members. I do love the Grinch. I mean, I decorate my room and the Grinch. 
I do. I don't know. I just think it's so fun and he's so misunderstood and he's like hates Christmas and then see then he lo- and then realizes it's not Christmas that he doesn't like, right? So um I started doing that a couple of years ago. So when I do it a week before Christmas, usually I do gr- I call it Grinch Miss and we do Grinch Miss a week before. Um I have a whole Grinch themed menu. When the first time I did that it took a couple of weeks to plan it. Well, that. About that I have to do, so it only takes a couple of days. Because I try to change out a few of the things, but yeah, we do that. Um, and then two days before Christmas, we like I usually do cookie decorating night. We like to do that. The guys get right into it, man. They get really well, actually. I think this weekend we got two of our guys doing a cake decorating night because they're uh, they want more. So, oh, there's cookie decorating. That's so fun. So, um, you know, we you celebrate um, Christmas and Thanksgiving, but then it's also like Fourth of July, Labor Day, or the way you say, glad you worked all year, I think. It's a, <laughs> and then, um, so you'll do that, and then Easter as well. Are, am I missing any other holidays that you guys celebrate? I don't think so. Um, if I'm here for Halloween, I'll make like a Halloween themed menu. I do theme menus sometimes. Like I did that. Um, what did we? Uh, on the first day of fall, I did like a fall theme. You know, I'll make menus like that. Like I did a fall theme, so it'll be all like autumny kind of foods on the first day of fall. I'll make like leaf cutout cookies and stuff. Or I did a Game of Thrones theme day once before. You know, a couple years back. So. I'll do theme days, like on Halloween too, I'll do like a, if I'm here, I'll make like themed foods for that, like, you know, spooky hot dogs or something like that kind of stuff, Halloween punch or something. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's fun. So um, when, you, back to winter work, because some people are like, why is, why is Sissy on board a vessel and layup? So just to explain to people that might know, you know, our season is March to January, and then January to March, that's where we're laid up at docks all around the Great Lakes, and we are doing what we call winter work, and that's when we invest millions of dollars into our fleet, uh, everything from overhauling engines to renewing steel to any problem. You're on the dry dock now. They have inspections. So there's all of these things that are happening. Even though our ships are idle, there are actually a lot of activity on board. And in some cases, we will have stewards. We'll, so we'll have crew on board some vessels, staying on board some vessels. And then we'll have um, you know, someone like Sissy um, still cooking for the crew members aboard so but it's different than a typical season you may not have as many people tell us what winter work is like and how that's different than what you do normally during the season oh man it is i mean for the because i'm also making desserts and stuff but i don't see the crew that much because they're all downstairs like i said it's basically all our engine guys and um like my brother right now he's on the gate crew so he's placing gates down in the tunnel you got the engines guys or all our engineers are doing whatever over for all the engines and cleaning and all that i don't really know but they're doing stuff with the engines <laughs> i mean i'm working on my course no um so now i don't see them very much and that changes my meal hours so the guys come in like from seven to eight in the morning and then lunch is like usually noon we had it early today so i could do this but it's usually noon to 12 30. And then dinner, they don't actually eat till six because they work 10 hour days. So I don't, it's quiet in here. We're normally right now, you know, I would see somebody be bopping through if we were underway. Somebody would be like, hey, sissy, what are you doing? You know, or coming to BS or whatever with me. Um, but definitely, I only have, I think I only cook right now for about 10, sometimes 14, because sometimes I get some of our other um, guys that come in like, uh, we have our cat guys on right now, so looking for a few extra people. Right, it's quite skeleton crew. So, how does getting groceries and things like that change when you're at the shipyard? Oh, um, I try right now, like this end of the season. So, like even in December, I was trying to dwindle down a lot of my supplies. So that way, we try to run everything as low and out as you can. We're at the shipyard, and I can get groceries once a week. And I actually do it the same way, but I just write it out on a sheet of paper so I'm not getting that much. 
again, I send it to the office and they'll send it to this local grocery store called Econo Foods and then they deliver it to me. And then my uh, Ronnie is the ship keeper right now. So he'll help me bring them up through the grocery place and helps me bring them to the galley. Great. Well, I think we have a little bit of time left. I, those are most mostly my questions. I know you're, there's best, been a lot of other questions here that you'll have. Um, <clears throat> but I know you were talking about um, being able to give us maybe a little tour of the galley there, um, where obviously you're sitting right now. But if you yeah. could um, show us maybe, you know, the pantry and uh, just where all the magic happens there, that'd be great before um, oh. before Michelle takes over and asks you all the other questions. <laughs> all right, here we let me see if I can go slow here. Okay. All right. So that's my, there's my stove, my range, my soup every day. I haven't cleaned it yet because I had to get over here. But I have two ovens. Usually that one's my second cook's oven. They call it mine. I got a fryer. I had a counter. I got my ribs over here getting ready. I'm going to be putting those in the oven here. Ooh, those look good. Um, normally, this window goes up. It's my serving line. So the guys will stand on the other side, grab their trays, and read their menu, which is this was today's menu. So like I said, then it's dinner. Great. This is my second, it's kind of, it's laid up right now, but this is my second cook station. He's got usually his flour, sugar. He's got a Hobart mixer. Yeah, so has a KitchenAid over there. And this is my one pantry. All my dry stores. I got juice, vegetables, all my canned stuff. And is that like a typical amount? Because it looks like a lot on there right now. Is that does is that a lot or is that like a pared down amount? It's pared down a little bit. Um, I do usually have it quite more stocked. I didn't work it down as much this this season, so usually it's down a lot more by now. So this is this isn't too bad. I wouldn't be nervous if I was underway with this. Cool. It's so interesting to see like all the condiments and dressings. I'm always amazed. Like I know you'll take us into the dining rooms, but I'm always amazed at the condiments that are available. <laughs> yeah, like this fridge is normally packed. It's usually my bread fridge and I normally have at least, oh God, probably at least 14 loaves of bread and stuff at a time, you know, so. But these are the only coolers I have on board. So these are all like refrigerators. Okay. And then um, I have three freezers. Okay. Which I'm pretty stocked up still. So. We still got two more weeks. Slicer. Here's my chair. I was sitting. On. Contained. You pretty pretty much do everything in there, huh? Yeah. Um, this is the officer's mess. It's um, shut down right now because all the officers are basically, well, not all the officers, but we don't split up. Since we have a skeleton crew, this is laid up for right now. And I'm going through linen and a lot of extra stuff we don't do underway. I'm doing right now so I can order us new linens and linen and stuff for uh, the sailing here. But we have an ice machine. It's a little loud in here. This is their night lunch fridge I was telling you about. Okay, so they can make sandwiches and stuff for themselves. Yeah. Yogurt, juice, ice cream stuff. I usually make, I don't have a full salad bar right now, but I just make them salads and stuff and house it up. Coffee station. Yeah, so they get, they're pretty stocked up in here. This is their main, this is 
underway. This is the unlicensed mushroom. Okay. And they have and like cereals, and that kind of stuff, snacks and cereals and all kinds of fruits. Those are all available anytime. Yes, ma'am. Okay, great. Wow, this is a great little tour. Um, I am going to turn this over to Michelle and she can ask you some questions. <laughs> all right. Okay. Thanks, Sissy. Just wait for her to sign back on here. Oh, there she is. There. <laughs> Just took a minute. Um, managing you. multiple screens here. Uh, we'll give we have I have quite a few questions already, but I'm going to give people a few more minutes to enter some more, and I will quickly uh, review the status of our visitor centers in Duluth, Minnesota, and here in Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan. Uh, the the visitor center is in its winter hours in Duluth, Minnesota, and they have a cell phone tour available outdoors and an online gift shop. Uh, here in the the Sault Ste. Marie, our visitor center is closed for the winter but we have our exhibits available online. I will post a link to that in the chat, uh, as well as the link to our survey. And the uh, location where we will be posting this video uh, by tomorrow noon, if you have to leave before Sissy has a chance to answer all of the many, many questions that have been submitted. And uh, next month, just a reminder once again to shamelessly plug myself, I'll be doing a program about winter work at the Sioux Locks and all the things that we're doing all winter to get the locks ready for our March 25th season opener. And with that, I'm going to start going through my questions. Um, there were a couple people, I think, asking about recipes and a cookbook. Uh, this is something that uh, I've been bugging Chrissy about. Um, I would love to see an Interlake Steamship Company cookbook. I have volunteered multiple times to come and do taste testing, to carry cameras, <laughs> to has, wash dishes. True story. Yeah, she has. And, and to edit whatever it takes, because I think it, it would be a fantastic product. Uh, I think you, you already recipes, but yeah, you guys can put it all together. If you want recipes, I'll give you some of both. <laughs> yep. Always willing to share any recipes I have. So, um, so uh, there have been a couple questions. I'm just going to kind of paraphrase them, asking what it's like to cook when you're in rough weather. And one person even commented, and the first thing that popped into my mind is those open shelves full of canned goods. Do you ever have conditions where those are, are not secure? No, everything everything doesn't matter if it's rough weather or not. Everything is should be secure. Everything should always have everything secure anyway. We have really good captains and stuff. It's very, I have never really been in rough weather where I'm like, oh man, I can't cook in this. I mean, do you roll a little bit? A little bit, but nothing that's, I don't have pots sloshing around. I mean, you know, I mean, there's, it's not like, it doesn't get like that. You might have a little roll, but nothing sliding. We'll go, we'll go out and drop the hook and, you know, we'll wait it out. Nothing's really, or take a shoreline so you're not getting your butt kicked on the water. So, not, never anything really like that. Not like you see I, a biggest catch or, you know, <laughs> you see some of these videos and you, it's, yeah, it's not like that. <laughs> I guess uh, Great Lakes captains are much more sensible now. They're pretty, I, you know, there ain't none that make me nervous. So, I mean, you can sleep easy with all of our guys. We got good skippers over here. And uh, this is something I think you already addressed, but just in case, I'm going to ask how many people do you typically feed? Um, each vessel's a little different, but you're roughly between 19 to 24. And then uh, someone else is asking, do you are um, do you find that crew members are more like health conscious now? And do you do anything to help like support people who are trying to diet or or have you know specific dietary things they're trying to follow? Um, I don't specifically if someone's like, well, hey, you know, I'm trying to do this. Most of, there's so many options we can adapt anything for. 
right? If, so, if so, somebody tells me they have a, like a gluten allergy, of course I'm going to order like, you know, the gluten-free breads and stuff like that for them or gluten-free pasta I've had. And I'll make them cauliflower crusts on pizza night and stuff, you know, and so on. But um, if, it's hard. It's It can be hard to try to stay on health track out here because there's so much stuff all the time that's made for them. But you can't, if you can do it, there's always, like I said, fresh fruits, yogurts, um, a salad bar at all times. There's usually at, for dinner, there's always usually a pro, one protein that's not like, uh, like a chicken parm, you know, there'll be just something else, like just a plain pork chop or something else, you know, with that. So you can, if somebody specifically asks me for stuff, I usually try to help them out. I've had, a, this, this year I had a couple vegetarians on board, so. I would try to make a few more vegetarian dishes for them. And uh, someone else has asked, um, do you do anything to observe crew member birthdays? Oh, I love crew member birthdays. Yes. If somebody lets me, if I know, I mean, I've had actual like other friends or some of my like um, shipmates, wives or something will be like, hey, I have these birthdays today. And if I, or if I know somebody is like, I've reached out to, you know, hey, Hey, what's your your dad, your husband's, you know, your sister's? What's their favorite cake? So I can make them something. And I definitely need some work on some cake decorating classes. What I try my best. <laughs> and I love to make some cakes or something for them. Yep. And Astrid um, said that you're her favorite, and that she Astrid? thanks you for taking care of her husband. He was the guy who just walked through a minute ago. That's Ronnie. Yeah. <laughs> oh, actually, she's so sweet. Yeah, we made him. They're expecting, so we made him. When Ronnie came back, um, one of the guys was like, Ronnie's coming back. And they got married last year. So we had made them a cake that said, Congrats, you know, Astrid and uh, Ronnie had to get married. We made him a baby cake when we found out, you know, he was there expecting. So, yeah, got to do some kind of fun things out here if you can. And we had a couple people ask about um, what companies deliver the groceries and about how you figure the budgets. That might be a question more for Chrissy. Well, uh, Sissy can talk to who the companies are for sure, but um, you know, we don't have set budgets for our ships. They're given a lot of leeway to order kind of what they want. I think Sissy would probably agree with that. Um, we do have yeah. a special things when when um you know we have kind of go all out and have lobster tails or crab legs and things like that so we definitely have a good budget for food and and somebody did ask this question i'm jumping in here with this michelle but somebody asked if um the company pays for food or if they have to pay for food um and uh it is paid for it's part of part of the benefit of working on a ship um room and board is provided. Um, so, and just to remind people, there's someone that still has their microphone on. So you want to mute yourself on your microphone. It's really loud for everybody else. But um, yes, that's a covered benefit, um, just like Wi-Fi and all that kind of stuff on board or vessel, direct TV, that kind of thing. But um, but yeah, Sissy can talk about the companies that he deals with uh, in the late Chandlers, right? All the Chandlers. Yeah, our Chandlers. We have uh, three mates. Four, we have four now. We have one in Cleveland that we use. Um, we also have uh, KK Portage uh, Meats there. We use that in, in uh, Cleveland. We have Marine Market in Alpena, which we use. Um, Sioux Marine Supply in Sioux St. Marie, which is that's the one that brings us. That's the only one that actually brings our food out by tugboat um, that we don't stop to get. Um, and then we have Eloise Marine Market up in Superior, Wisconsin. Those are our four main vendors that we really have right now. And uh, we had a couple people also wanting to know, like, how much of a cushion do you keep for groceries? You know, you said you have your regular places you're able to stop, but how much do at least you personally like to have in excess on hand in case there are delays i am pretty stocked up like i could probably go two weeks where you're going to run low on is your produce and stuff and your milk that's not going to carry but i normally have uh, at least 
six crates of milk, which equals nine half gallons. So I always have like that kind of stuff on. I always have, I mean, I've got plenty of stocks usually. So I could probably go about um, a good two weeks at least before I'd be like, okay, I'm getting a little nervous here. But especially in the fall, um, October is like the new November. I swear it's getting a little worse more in uh, <laughs> October than November. And then it's the spring to uh, fit out because you still have a lot of ice and that can delay you up sometimes. So this fall, uh, definitely fall, winter, and spring, you kind of want to be a little more, be a little more heavy, heavy on the food supply. And we had somebody asking how many days or weeks do you work continuously before you have time off? And um, a, a kind of a second part of that question is when you are finished for the day, if the boat is at a dock, do you leave the boat? Um, if we're at a dock, yeah, there's times we will all, uh, we'll all go for dinner sometimes. Hey, let's just, it's just nice to get off the boat, you know, and we'll all go, you know, sometimes five, six of us will all take off. And me and the deckhands last year used to go up a lot for dinner. And my brother, because my brother's on this vessel too. So we'd all go up for dinner sometimes. And then how and long then, are you on the boat at a time? I mean, each person varies. You can have a 60, 30 rotation. It varies sometimes. I Now that I'm more permanent, I can kind of pick my schedule, but it, it varies. There could be 30 to 110 days before I get a day off. And when you're out here, you don't get no days off. You work continuously. So I don't have a day off until I'm on shore. I can and understand I, that because they got to eat every day. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you don't get no days off. So if, I, if I'm gone for 90 days, I've worked 90 days. And then someone else asked, do all of the cooks have to work during the winter? No, there's only right now we have four vessels that have winter work cooks on them. You sign up for this, like, you don't, I don't, I don't have to work. Uh, winter work is you just sign up for it. And uh, a couple of people, and you might have already kind of addressed this when you were talking about the uh, skill and judiciousness of our captains, but uh, what is it like to cook in bad weather? And has have you ever had to delay meals because of weather? Nope. Nope. Uh, it's not bad. Um, I've never had any bad weather where I've had to, like, we're rolling around, my pots are sliding, I've never had to cook in that. It doesn't get that bad out here. Like I said, they'll take the North Shore, we drop the anchor and we're sitting on the hook for a day or two. And so, I mean, you might roll a little bit, but nothing that's going to slide, nothing that's going to make me fall or my food's going to fall all over. Yeah. And then we had uh, a couple comments about your gorgeous knitting. <laughs> How long have you been knitting? Oh, gosh. Uh, my Aunt Carol taught me uh, years ago, and then I kind of dropped it and I picked it back up and dropped it picked it back up so uh probably i really started knitting a lot when i quit smoking it helped me keep something to do with my hands probably back in 2013 ish i started knitting a lot more i mean i mainly just make hats mittens scarves i like to knit hats for the guys like i said for christmas and then we had a couple people kind of comment how often are there guests on board and um can regular people take trips, which I think uh, Christy can probably answer. But um, yeah. also, I'm curious, when you have guests on board, does that have any impact on your meal planning or the work that you're doing? Not too much. I always have I mean, it depending when you're on the PRT, yes, because you have a lot more passengers over there. Not here so much if I just have, you know, somebody has some of their family on. I make enough food if I've had a few extra people on board. It's not gonna, not gonna affect my what I make. Yeah, but the rest, yeah, Christy can answer about the all passengers. Okay, so um, I would say pre-COVID, because COVID has changed everything. But pre-COVID, we would generally, as a company, donate trips to nonprofits to like auction or raffle off um, as fundraisers. And so we would have, you know, we would have some people on board for that. We will occasionally have 
of course, like dignitaries or Coast Guard people or um, customers, things like that. And then, of course, like uh, people from the office will be aboard. We have safety people that are generally their operations, myself, um, personnel. So, um, but in terms of the general public, you know, COVID, we have to keep our crews safe. Um, we generally, ha we haven't had really very many, pass if, if any, passengers um, since I have myself have not even been on board a vessel uh, in the last two years. So while it's, it's a great experience and we wish we could offer that because of our nature of our business, you know, we're 24 seven and um, we're not a cruise ship. So we kind of have to get, get our products to our customers all around the Great Lakes. And that's kind of our number one focus and keep our crews. So unfortunately we can't offer passage to the public. And um, yeah. <laughs> if everyone could make sure you're still muted, um, someone has asked, what's the longest leg of a voyage on the Great Lakes where you can't get groceries? And have you ever gotten kind of uh, low on something? Yeah, um, I was on the Jackson for a while and we were doing a lot of lower lake stuff. And yeah, you get low sometimes, but I mean, it was a lot of work boat docks and we couldn't get groceries all the time. But uh, we ended up just being able to go up and I went up and um, at one of the ports in Indiana because there's no supplier down in Lake Michigan. So we just ran up the street and grabbed just a few of the supplies that I was running out of. I was like actually running out of like uh, bacon and eggs and butter. So we just ran up and grabbed some of that and brought it back. And we've had uh, a couple people that also want to apply for an official taster's position. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and um, lots of compliments for both of you. Uh, uh, people also saying they are ready and willing to buy the cookbook whenever it comes out. <laughs> and uh, Sandra has commented, Sissy, you're an incredible workhorse cook, very admirable, but now I'm hungry. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. And uh, someone else, Rick is asking, how often does Sissy have to jump around to different boats to cover other cooks? I do not anymore. The, I believe um, last year was my uh, I got the Masabi Minor permanent, so I'll be here. The, this should be my, uh, should be here this year as well. So I don't have to bounce around anymore. But there were times I'd be in six boats in one year. Is that based on like seniority? Yeah. Okay. And just to chime we did in, have like, oh, I'm sorry, just to chime in, like she's a permanent um, and that's what permanent means. Like this is her boat and she'll have this boat every season. And then there's people that are reliefs and those, those people kind of bounce around and fill in around vacations and stuff. So, so when Sissy gets off the boat during the season, some a relief person would fill in for her um that's just kind of how it works really throughout all the positions on board the vessel and someone's asking when you get off the boat do you like eating someone else's cooking <laughs> um i i have my older son that lives with me when i'm home but i don't i don't cook much so <laughs> i like i don't want to eat much I <laughs> buy pre-made or something like that at one of the buy one chicken from our local store in the Sioux Nevels. That's about it though. Someone else is cooking though. Bring it on. Bring it on over. <laughs> <laughs> I don't cook much when I'm home, that's for sure. I don't cook much when I'm home either and I have no excuse. <laughs> I eat a lot of canned soup when I'm home. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm I'm checking to make sure I've got all the 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 key things here. Someone's asking how many rooms there are for visitors. Um, do do you want me to answer that? It depends on the it ship. Like, yeah, like Sissy mentioned the PRT, which like if people don't know what that is, that's our our um, Paul Archer Gertha, and she's the longest on the Great Lakes. So she 
she, when we do have visitors and we do raffle off those trips in the past, a lot of our visitors would be on that ship. And that ship has um, a owner's lounge is what they call it. And there's three rooms there. Um, so you can have, I think, up to six people or something like that. Um, maybe not that many. So there's rooms and there. And someone asked a question that maybe is a little bit unfair, but they want to know who is the second best cook in the, in the fleet. <laughs> so I, I, I won't. Watch that one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know who's the number one. I don't, I don't I'm not stepping on that one. <laughs> nope. And someone asked how long Sissy's been sailing. Um, I started sailing in 2006, and I started with Interlake in 2010. And someone's asking if you take all those pictures of the beautiful sunsets and views that uh, I presume that we've been showing during your, your program. Um, I think everything she's posted is everything that I've taken, but I do post and take a lot. And I know uh, Chrissy will post some of them on the Interlakes page, and she usually takes the mirror and says if I've taken them. I do take, I do take a lot. And then someone's asking what kind of camera you use. <laughs> Google my uh, Samsung 10. I think it's an S10. <laughs> my Samsung, my phone. I do have a camera at home, and I do not know how to use it. I have a Canon Rebel I bought. I don't know how many years ago. I don't know how to use it. I just leave that home. Use my phone. I don't know. <laughs> I did buy one of those lens balls, so I do like use them. At. And uh, Bernie is commenting that sis, you are the captain of the ship because the ship runs on the galley. Yeah, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Thank you know, you. And then, and then that uh, reminded me of a question I had that I don't know if you got uh, to or not that I was curious about is, does the captain get special meals? No, um, I don't do anything special. Um, once a, the only thing I do once in a while is um, I will call up there if we're in the rivers. I'll send them a text on their on their phone and be like, "Hey, you hungry? Do you want me to send you something up?" And I'll set, you know, I'll run them up like breakfast. They ask for breakfast or lunch if we're, you know, in the rivers and they can't come down. They'll either tell me, "Yeah, hey, yeah, or no, I'll come down later and get some things." Special meals, no. It's just like anybody, if they want something, they'll write it down on a request list. They'll be like, "Hey, Sissy, can you make, you know, that that one soup? That's my favorite. Sure, I'll make that." But just like anybody and and someone's commented and maybe Chrissy can make this happen is that you should have Guy Fieri come on board. <laughs> there you go. That'd be fun. Yeah, that would. <laughs> celebrity celebrity chefs on board. <laughs> and, uh, and, and Angie's asking, uh, where is the galley located compared to the bridge? We're on the spar deck. So we're on, I'm like, if you don't know the ship, so I'm right on, I guess if you're looking right on, like, if you're looking on fascinating. Side, I'm right on, like, it's main deck. It's not main deck, but for you right. guys, maybe you would think it's main, it's not actual main deck, but if you were to look at it, I would be right on the bottom. We're actually I imagine that it. makes it easier to get the groceries in and out. It does. Not all ships, though, it's not. Um, on some of the short boats, the galley's actually up a deck. Yeah, and I, I would think that's an interesting thing, too, because She's been on cuddled her up ship, to me this whole time ship, until right the now. Just a few, the um, big girl. Yeah, laying right up there with her head right here. Uh, somebody is unmuted. Um, I'm, I'm, if you could double check and make sure that your microphone is muted. I'm trying to scroll through, but we have a lot of uh, participants today. But so on a on a old one of our traditional Lakers, the pilot house is forward, and the galley is in the aft section of the ship. So everybody, a lot of people have to walk back across the ship or go through the weather tunnels to get their meals. That is true. 
Then I would bring, sometimes I would go up, especially with Captain Nick. they like, yeah, you want breakfast? And he's like, I'll make you the good coffee. And he'd make me good coffee. And I'd go up there and have coffee social with him and bring him breakfast at 8 o'clock after his son's service. So, That's nice of you. <laughs> yeah, I miss those times. It's fun to go up and have coffee social and I'd go up there and bullshit for a minute. And uh, more comments that we must do a cookbook. <laughs> I'm throwing myself in there as a we because you need an editor and a taster. Just, you know. And, and I'm not bad with the photography. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Penny is asking, uh, what products are carried on your ship? What, what? Oh, so she's asking, like, um, what car goes, right? So, so we carry iron ore. We carry uh, stone, we carry coal, we carry salt. So, um, uh -huh. but the biggest cargo we have is iron ore or taconite pellets. Seven thirty, I think. <laughs> I'm trying to mute everyone. My apologies to uh, everybody. We have a lot of participants, and it's a lot of scrolling on my end. Um. Oh, we have other people also saying that they're good cookbook editors, but I'm not uh, I'm not going to share that contact information because. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I don't see any more questions coming in. I will let both of you know that we have had nothing but praise for how interesting and uh, fabulous this program was. I'm going to take a minute and give people a few more minutes and I will share. Um, some information for this program and other things that the Sulox Visitor Center and Duluth Visitor Center are doing in ways that you can keep in touch with us and follow us. I am also one last time posting in the chat the link to our survey. We really invite all of you to fill that out. It helps us plan future programs. It only takes about three minutes. And there is also a link to our YouTube channel where we will be posting this by noon tomorrow if you want to share it with your friends and family because this was an absolutely fantastic program. And I thank both of Christy and Sissy for joining us and, and doing this. And I uh, encourage all of you to follow us, like us, etc. Thank you. Thank you. Great to be with you. Thank you, Sissy. Yeah, thank you.